As a digital artist, switching from Photoshop and a desktop computer to Procreate and the iPad was a huge change and super exciting. But after 18 months, the honeymoon is over. So here are five things I miss about Photoshop and two reasons why despite all of this, I'm gonna stick with this setup. Just for a bit of background, I've used Photoshop for more than 10 years, both professionally and personally. I've used it for graphic design, web design, uh, digital painting and concept art. So I feel like I have a pretty broad experience in Photoshop and it was a really core part of my workflow and part of my life for a very long time. So I didn't take this decision to switch lightly. So the first thing I really miss is keyboard shortcuts. And I know that um, Procreate has a lot of amazing gestures and you know, jumping into a new format like a tablet and drawing with that was such a big change. And I think the excitement of that change meant it was hard for me to see the issues or problems with it. Um, but I did remember feeling like when I switched you know, sometimes gestures and things didn't really feel natural to me. And I told myself just to bear with it because I would get used to it. And there are certain gestures that I have gotten really used to, but there are also other aspects to using this setup that still feel squishy to me today. And that's the best way I can explain it. Like when you use a keyboard shortcut or just a keyboard in general, it's really hard and tactile and you can just hit that key and know that it's gonna give you a certain output. And I really miss being able to just, you know, open Photoshop and hit, you know, Control N for a new file and Control A to select everything and then Control C and Control V. And it's really nice just to have that to help you get into a flow state and feel that sense of momentum Whereas with Procreate, there's none of that at all. A lot of times I would use keyboard shortcuts would be for graphic design tasks, things like image resizing, you know, cropping, copying a marquee selection and things like that. And I know that Procreate is not a graphic design tool. It's purely for digital painting. And so that is kind of another thing that I miss about Photoshop. It was this great program that allowed me to do everything. And I just knew that um, I would only need one program and I could get everything done in that one program. Uh, whereas now I have a different setup. So I focus all my digital illustration in Procreate. And then if I wanna do quick raster graphic design work, I'll use Photopea. And for those that don't know, Photopea is this Photoshop clone that you can access online through the web. When I discovered it, I thought this is amazing. I can completely replace Photoshop. But there is one downside and that is using keyboard shortcuts in Photopea because sometimes the keyboard shortcuts might actually be affecting the browser, like they might actually be browser shortcuts and not specifically shortcuts within Photopea. And so I find myself using Photopea the manual way where I'm just using you know, a mouse and clicking and sure I can get things done, but it's just not the same and I do miss those keyboard shortcuts. The second thing I miss from Photoshop is adjustment layers. And for those that don't know, adjustment layers are like a non-destructive layer that you can put on top of your artwork and it allows you to do things like color balancing or brightness and contrast or hue or saturation adjustments. Um, and it means you don't have to flatten all the layers beneath to create a layer where you can adjust the colors. Now Procreate does have adjustments, they're just not in layers. So for example, if I go and hit the color balance, it will only color balance the layer that's currently highlighted. And if I wanna color balance the entire artwork as a whole, I would need to flatten all those layers first and then use the color balance. And that's not really ideal if you know you wanna keep everything intact in separate layers. And that's what I mean by non-destructive. So Photoshop's adjustment layers allow you to put a layer on top that has all those color controls without you having to destroy all the layers beneath it. That's something that's super useful and I think people from the community really do want as well. And it is a considered item on the Procreate forums. So hopefully that will come through soon or in the next version. Uh, but yeah, that's something I really miss. Before when I was talking about like things feeling squishy, this is the one thing in Procreate that I just can't get over. Like I feel really squishy when using the marquee tool. And what I mean by squishy is sometimes I feel like the output that I get or what I'm pressing onto the screen doesn't give me what I expect. And I feel like it's kind of random and doesn't feel solid or give me confidence. In Photoshop, I used to sometimes use the marquee tool to even paint, you know, using it to um, draw areas that I want to fill. And a lot of artists use this method of painting. And it's such an integral part of many people's workflow. But in Procreate, I just find myself avoiding the marquee tool altogether. I'll only use it if I absolutely have to. So for example, if I want to select a part of the image that I want to transform or you know, distort, then I'll use it, but I will never use it for painting itself or for filling large areas or defining areas that need to be filled. Instead, what I do is I just paint the areas that I want to become masks 
And yeah, I feel like that's just a lot more reliable and less scary, if that makes sense. When I first got Procreate, I discovered that this wasn't a part of Procreate. There was no undo history. And of course that made me pause, but I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought, oh, it's fine. I'll just undo, you know, as long as I can undo, it should be fine. And so over all this time of using Procreate, I never really found it an issue until last week when I was doing something to one of my paintings to a specific layer. And funnily enough, I was using the marquee tool and somehow I selected something, I selected the layer and then accidentally filled that layer. And then I think I'd done some further actions after that before I realized that I'd filled the layer. And then I was like, oh crap, I need to quickly undo. And it didn't matter how many undoes I did, it just wouldn't get back to that place where I'd done the fill. I couldn't find that point. And that was the moment I realized I really wish I had the history tool so I could step back and identify that exact action or moment where I'd done that fill and you know jump before that and I couldn't and that's when it dawned on me that like you know all of this hard work that I do for painting things you know the hours that I spend drawing and painting um, these artworks they're all placing trust in this idea of the double tap that I could just undo and double tap my way back if I made a mistake um, and then that got me thinking about you know is there any redundancy is there um, version control anything like that I mean I know Photoshop doesn't have version control I know Photoshop you can't go back to a previous version of your file at least not that I'm aware of maybe the new Photoshop has it I don't know but um, as far as I know you can't do that in Photoshop but at least if I was on Photoshop on a desktop with a file system maybe I would have backups going maybe I would have some kind of version control and I could jump back whereas on an iPad that's all I got, you know, like it just auto saves and I don't really know what's going on. It's just there and I'm placing all my trust that it's going to work out. So this leads me into the fifth and final thing that I miss about Photoshop and working on a desktop. And that is the idea of having folders and project files. In Procreate, we've got stacks, which means you can, you know, drag an artwork on top of another artwork and they'll combine into a stack. And that's your way of organizing artworks. But that's all you can do. You've only got one level of organization. You can't create stacks within stacks. And again, when I first started with Procreate, I didn't think it was a big deal. I was like, whatever, I'll just draw my artworks and they save there. I don't need to have advanced organization systems. Um, but if you've worked on anything professionally or any type of larger projects that are more complex, you start to realize how important organization is. And you know, an example might be, let's say you were doing a video game project and you might have a stack named after that project. And then within that project, you might have sub stacks. And one of the sub stacks might be character art. And then the other sub stack might be environment art. Another sub stack might be animation. Okay, so those are the five things I really miss about you know Photoshop and having a desktop setup. But there are two reasons why, despite all these things, I'm gonna stick with Procreate and the iPad. And the first thing is obviously money and the cost. I mean, I've already bought this thing and I put the money into it. And I don't think the issues are so bad that they'd make me want to fully switch back. I am open to trying other pieces of software on the iPad. Maybe they'll have things like history or you know a better marquee tool or adjustment layers. So that would be awesome. And it's something I'm gonna explore in the future. The second reason I'm not gonna give up on this setup is the iPad itself. Having a mobile art studio like the iPad, you know, being able to carry it anywhere and draw directly onto the tablet is a complete game changer. And the one thing that keeps me coming back to it is the fact that it helped me get out of a drawing rut. Like being able to move around with your iPad and draw anywhere is completely amazing. I didn't realize it at the time, but a lot of the times in the past where I wasn't productive was because I just didn't feel like coming to my desk here or in a room inside and you know being tethered to my computer maybe through a Wacom tablet and having to draw that way the moment I got the iPad and I was able to just go and sit on a couch or you know go to the park or a cafe and just carry everything with me all in this one neat 
beautiful package was yeah just amazing and that's why I'm going to stick with this setup but I will say that the iPad is not perfect either there are issues that I have with that but I'm going to save that for another video and I'm super curious to explore other pen tablets uh, how they stack up to the iPad because now I can see how actually we could have something better than the iPad. There's issues with this that I have that I think could be improved on and there are aspects about the Wacom pen and tablet that I miss as well. So I'll save that for a future video. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.